She let the man spread her legs, then he lifted her dress to expose her stomach. He gently tapped her belly with his fingers, and then rubbed the bladder under her skin with more vigor. With the sound of water, Muriel was able to urinate with the help of her male caregiver. It was so humiliating for her, a former strong woman, that she could only pretend to be asleep to avoid it. Muriel is paralyzed from the neck down and is to be fed and cared for. Her new caregiver is a man named Leo. Muriel had no choice, because her temperament had changed since she was paralyzed. Her moodiness and impertinence were unbearable. As time went by, even though Muriel offered a high salary, few people applied for the job. The job finally went to Leo. He was so poor and disheveled, he didn't even look like he could take care of himself. But the ex cars eagerness to quit left Muriel with no choice but to agree to hire Leo. Unsurprisingly, Leo overslept on his first day of work. He arrived in Muriel's room without even getting dressed. Muriel was furious but couldn't do anything but scold him. Leo washes his face and brings Muriel some food, then rinses his mouth afterward. Muriel said she wanted to read a book. He takes out a wooden stand and books and puts a bent stick in Muriel's mouth so she can turn the pages. Leo was quiet when he did this, even when Muriel yelled at him, but he was surprisingly gentle and patient. There was a seriousness in his rusty and clumsy movements, and it made Muriel feel better about him. What was meant to be was meant to be. At 10 a. M. It's time for Muriel's bowel movement. Leo walks in with a potty and a towel, and he can't hide his nervousness. Muriel was more embarrassed than he was, because this was the first man besides the doctor to do it for her. Before she was ready, she interrupted him with an excuse to make a phone call and told Leo to go out and wait. But the number she called was a blank. Finally, Muriel decided to break the ice and told herself it was no big deal. But the nervous Leo forgot all about how to urinate for her. He roughly lifts the covers and, in a panic, roughly finishes her bowel movements. Leo realized that the job was not so simple. He decided to quit. The former caregiver told him Muriel's story to keep him there. Muriel was a young and promising CEO when she was suddenly paralyzed in a car accident. Just when she was at her wit's end, her fiancé left her. The experience of falling from heaven to hell caused her to change her temperament. All of her anger stemmed from her resentment that she can't do anything about it. Leo couldn't stay calm when he realized this because he saw something of himself in Muriel. He was a famous boxer until he retired and his dreams went out the window. His inability to cope with reality led him to use alcohol as a placebo and to drink every day. Muriel, on the other hand, was less fortunate than he was, but still didn't give up. He felt he had no reason to fall, so he gave up the idea of quitting his job and started a new life as a recovering alcoholic. Muriel made a bet with her caregiver that Leo wouldn't come back, but his persistence surprised her. The next day, Leo went out to buy groceries and found a little boy living on the street. Concerned, Leo went to ask him about it, but when he straightened up, he found a pickpocket behind him. Leo choked her violently, but the pickpocket's knife was already at Leo's neck. He could only stand by and watch as the pickpocket grabbed his wallet and took off. With no funds to buy food, Leo had to pay for it himself, but he's so poor. He can only buy cheap ingredients, including a fish. Looking at the delicious fish on his plate, Muriel cursed. Why many people never eat fish is because a large percentage of them get fish spines stuck in their throats. It's even worse for people who are paralyzed. Muriel is a living example. Paralyzed, she can't cough like a normal person. If she gets a fish bone in her throat, she could choke. That's why she stopped eating fish after she became paralyzed. Muriel said she would starve to death or jump from here rather than eat the fish. Leo didn't get angry, but assured her that it had picked out all the spines. He insisted that Muriel try to break the routine that had lasted her three years. Leo picked up a small piece of fish and brought it to Muriel's mouth. Finally she opened her mouth and ate. The flavor of the fish explodes between her mouth. Muriel continues to eat bite after bite of the fish and can't stop eating it. She even wants more. Leo says, unfortunately, that is the only one of its kind. Muriel's attempt went well, but Leo's sobriety has been difficult. Alcohol withdrawal made him miserable. He tried to ease the pain by mixing coke with alcohol, but he couldn't swallow it. The hangovers caused by his alcoholism made it impossible for him to show up for work on time more than a few times. What little satisfaction Muriel had with him was sapped by his repeated tardiness. Looking at Muriel in dismay, Leo stammers that he's sick and that's why he's late. Muriel is furious at this terrible lie. She immediately asks Leo what's wrong with him. Is it cancer? She'll buy him some wreaths when she goes to his funeral. Muriel had already discovered Leo's addiction to alcohol, and then she was so sly as to expose his lies. She warned him that if he was late again, he'd be fired. Leo knew he had to step up his efforts to stop drinking. After his first week's pay, he uncharacteristically buys himself a new pair of shoes instead of buying alcohol. Then he went to a boxing gym and picked up his gloves again, punching at the familiar and strange sandbag. 
He used this method to vent his irritability and restlessness caused by his addiction to alcohol. His skills caught the attention of the gym's owner, who asked him to coach the students occasionally. In addition to quitting drinking, Muriel wanted Leo to take classes in culture. She forced the uneducated former boxing champion to read to her. Leo was a little impatient with the first lesson, but accepted Muriel's request to read to her every day. Leo also wants to help Muriel make more changes and offers to take her out for a walk. But Muriel values life and feels safe as lying down. She also said that Leo was drunk every day. If she let him take her out, she'd probably die on the stairs before she could even get out. Leo listened to Muriel's sarcastic remarks without defense. Of course, he didn't get up on this idea. If he really wanted to do something, how could Muriel resist him? Leo took it upon himself to take her to the beach. Muriel later words again, she looked at the blue sky and white clouds and enjoyed the gentle sea breeze on her cheeks. It was a relief she hadn't felt in a long time. Then Leo brought a wooden box with all the wines in his collection. He was going to play a little game with Muriel with this. Leo asked her to close her eyes, and then he put the bottles up to her nose and asked her to smell them. She had to guess what the wines were made of by the scent. Every time Muriel guessed correctly, Leo would recognize her and praise her. It made Muriel feel as if she was no longer a useless invalid. Leo changed under Muriel's influence. When she offered to go for a walk, Leo said he wanted to read now. Instead of being angry at the rejection, Muriel was pleased that Leo had taken up reading. As they spend time together, their relationship grows stronger. Muriel no longer rejects her paralysis and even agrees to go out in public. One day, she met an old friend. While they talked, Leo watched from a distance. Without interrupting or leaving, when Muriel turned around, she saw his gentle case. Finally, she decided to face her feelings. A male caregiver falls in love with a paralyzed pretty Frenchwoman, but is deport to hope for a woman's love. In order to earn money, he takes a part-time job as a trainer at a boxing gym, but is forced to get involved in a gang fight and gets beaten up and bloodied. To prevent Muriel from realizing his injuries, he asked the gym students to help him ask her for a day off, but his injuries were so severe that he couldn't get out of bed until the third day. When he arrived at Muriel's house, he found that she was already interviewing for a new caregiver. Muriel looked at Leo's face with anger and pain, but she had given Leo many chances. Now she just feels disappointed that he won't change. She asked Leo in a mean tone what he was missing work for this time. Had his alarm clock gone off two days late? Leo listened to Muriel's sarcasm and kept promising that it would never happen again. But no matter how much he pleaded, a furious Muriel fired him anyway, but the tears in the corners of her eyes revealed her frustration. After being thrown out by Muriel, Leo buys another bottle of wine and tries to numb himself with alcohol as before. But he didn't know that it would strengthen his nerves, and in his drunken stupor, he went to the wrong place. When Muriel opens her eyes the next morning, she finds a disheveled Leo lying next to her. She was shocked, but the curve of her mouth gave away her joy. The new caregiver arrives on time and tries to get rid of the homeless man, but Muriel stops her. The caregiver couldn't understand what they were playing at, so she turned around and left. Muriel looked at the sleeping face of the man lying on the pillow and felt relieved to hear him snoring. But when Leo woke up, Muriel began to mock him again. Leo realized that he had slept in the wrong place. Although he was ashamed, he seized the opportunity to ask Muriel for permission to come back to work. He promised again that he would break all his bad habits and devote himself to his job. Then he went straight to work. Despite Muriel's objections, Muriel, in turn, persisted in making all sorts of mean and sarcastic remarks that would cause Leo pain. Suddenly, Leo jumped on the bed. Who's a monkey? Muriel's expression was one of guilt. She's too proud to handle this kind of passion. First, she denied it incoherently. Then she cried and complained that Leo was always so distant. She couldn't control her fantasies, but she was never at ease. C'est pas de ma faute. Moi, je voulais pas partir. C'est vous qui m'avez viré. The two of them finally resolved their misunderstanding. Leo returned to work, but this time, he and she were no longer in a relationship of employment but of love. Leo continued to take care of Muriel. He took her to roll in the grass. They embraced under the tree, no longer afraid of the strange stares of others, no longer seeming to be failed and broken human beings, but rather plants and trees in nature, talking about their love in the breeze. This is Maroon Recap. You can subscribe and leave comments if you have any ideas. See you next time.